guess it's a mixture of emotions really. Um, in some respects it's quite liberating um, in that um, I don't have any utility bills anymore, I don't get stuck in traffic jams, um, I'm, I don't have the stresses of modern life in some respects um, and it, it also feels really good to be living the way you want to live. Um, for you know, for two or three years, I knew, I I, I knew the theory behind, it, you know, the damage money was doing, and the repercussions of using um currency, and um, but I was living against my beliefs, and there's an internal struggle when when that happens, um, and I suppose the moment I give up living money, I started living um to my ideals, which I think is gives you a lot of satisfaction, a lot of fulfillment. Um, but it can also be sometimes it can be quite a lonely place to be. I'm not not geographically. I um, mean that there's I've all, always got lots of friends around and stuff. And um, but in the fact that it's it's when you're living it by yourself and other people are doing the same, and um, it feels like you can feel quite a you can feel like a small fish in a very large pleated ocean. Um, and the chance of the society living moneyless in my lifetime are you know so small it's unbelievable so it's it can you it's kind of like being a vegan or vegetarian the only the only one in the world knowing that you know the rest of the world will never actually take it on board as well and it can drive you a bit mad sometimes um knowing that it's, it's the question's never going to be raised so it's a bit, a bit of a mixture of emotions really the long-term plan is to set up a community that lives completely without money um, and so I'm, so I've, I'm in the process of setting up Free Economy as a charity and all the proceeds from my book um, is going into um, the, is going to be going straight into the charity and um, that, that fund will then buy a piece of land um, which we will then set up the first real life Free Economy community um, and so the long term plan is to even go more um, extreme in some people's view and um, it will be to grow completely my own food produce all my own energy um, take responsibility responsibility for our own waste. Um, so it's it's gonna it's probably in yeah it's probably gonna get even even more um, moneyless. Um, at, at at the moment, I'm obviously living in a in a community where everybody uses money, so there's some interaction with the money world. Um, but the plan is to phase that out over um, the next five years. The community that, I've, that I'm planning is going to be in a closed system in some respects in that we will take responsibility for all our own food, all our own energy, all our own waste but a very open system in other respects in that we're going to communicate a lot with the world and people can come and stay for a weekend or for a week or for a month and experience moneyless living and hopefully get inspired and take off and um, incorporate any ideas they've picked up into um, their own lives in their own communities. I think the important thing about um, facing the challenges that we do is the solutions need to be um, locally driven. There's no point in one person coming up and saying I've got the solution for the world because the world is a huge mix of cultures and religions and ideas and stories. Um, so I think it's about giving people ideas, questioning things and letting people come up with solutions that, that meet their needs and where, where they live. You don't have to go completely moneyless, I think, you know, in my ideal world definitely. But I think it's about transition. So each person's situation is different. You know, a family of four um, can't live the way I'm living right now. It'd be much more difficult. So for me, it's about learning to live with less and to use money less. So to instead of having um, instead of using money in every single transaction, um, to find ways of building more community in transactions. So you know, just having out people in your neighbourhood for free some evening. And I, my guarantee is that whenever you need it, somebody else will help you. It may not be the same person who you helped, but being part of a system where everybody shares what they have, then you know, six months on the line you can get the help you need for free. I began this in November 2008 and the first few months were quite difficult. I had to establish a whole new set of routines and um, everything took much more time. Um, down from like washing my clothes instead of just um, sticking them in the machine for you know and heading off and doing something else. I had to like engage in a process where I make my own soap first, then hand wash them, then wring them, then hang them up, 
I found that washing clothes could take two and a half hours sometimes, um, start to finish. Um, and so yeah, at the start I felt like, God, can I do this for a year? And then after about six months, it just felt like the most normal thing to do. Um, and that gives me a lot of hope for the future. And that I think we are, like most people are, very addicted to what to the life they live right now. But I think that when change is necessary, we can do it. Um, and, and, and after a short period of time, we can forget that it ever was any way different. Um, I think there's two ways things could go. I think change is inevitable. So I think we either embrace change um, and be positive about it and actively seek to do things differently. And I, I find that if you do that, it could be much more enjoyable. Like we could actually live a much more happier life um, by embracing that change. The other option is that it's going to be forced upon us. Um, like it's, it's, things are getting quite critical as regards to climate as it is, but we've also got things like peak oil. Um, which is the fact that oil isn't an infinite resource and we're using it as if it is um, and resource depletion in general we lose about five trillion um, dollar worth of of forest alone every year in, in natural capital and um, that can only go on for so long so there has to be a point in history when we do change things we can't this life still is inherently unsustainable I mean in the truest term of unsustainability um, so yeah like I I would love if people woke up and and said, actually, I don't want my pleasure to come from other people's pain anymore. I don't want to destroy the environment that my kids are going to grow up in um, for you know a short-term gain. Um, I don't want to abuse other people or, or animals anymore. That's my that's my dream. Um, whether people will be mature enough to embrace that, um, I'm not sure. Um, but I think, um, yeah, it's going to happen. So... My advice to people is to make the change right now. We're going to wake up in 10 years' time unless we make those changes completely addicted to a world that we can't have anymore. So if you make small steps today, you don't have to go morning list tomorrow or you know, completely change your lifestyle, but just maybe once a week, just do one thing um, that is more environmentally friendly and you'll find yourself after two or three years having you know 150 new things in your life that are um, that are more environmentally friendly. It might be changing your light bulbs one week, it might be building a compost loo the next week. Um, it could be just growing some veg on your windowsill the following week. Um, but if you do one of those things each week, then you'll find yourself in a few years' time well down the road to transitioning to a more ecological world.